Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whenever you are, and whatever you are. Welcome to this week's podcast. Today we're going to be looking at the superficiality of our existence. Society is an artificial construct created by feedback loops thanks to those goddamn marketeers. Let's begin with a little trip down memory lane, back to the day when some computer nerds made machines that would take in a bunch of outside data, process it, and try and predict the future. To fund it, they predominantly sold the information to people who wanted to buy and sell sh stocks. We're talking about the financial markets here. Very quickly, enough people were starting to buy this information that those good old computer nerds started to make the machines send out the stock reports themselves, which other machines took in as data to further sell, buy, and report on stocks by themselves. This eventually created a massive feedback loop of stock data being managed by autonomic intelligence, and that's not the same as artificial intelligence, mind. That outright blocked the human element, and right now the open secret is that the market is out of human control. If anyone tried to remove these data loops, even just one out of a sync chain, the whole system of the world economy would collapse overnight. Are you following me so far here? Because this is some important information we're starting with. In tandem with this technology, the internet happened, and a load of marketers started moving to content marketing, which is the idea that the product and the marketing are the same thing, and that you're selling a lifestyle history, which is why, if you pay attention, most companies that used to just sell a product have made a massive investment into the media space. Now this is fine in and of itself, and there have been iterations of it since the 1980s. The problem is that the easy proliferation of consumer data reaches these autonomic intelligent machines, and they begin to report on what kind of narratives sell and which ones don't. Simple, right? Well, not really. You see, we live in a post-hypernormalization world. There's a term from the uh, Soviet era for propaganda that keeps things that are something when the reality is something quite different to that. When you mix in marketing and propaganda with feedback loops and on top of the Google Ads program that essentially is you know, bubbles people into feedback loops and only give them what they want to hear so you can sell them something, it basically creates mass psychological dissonance between different groups of people that, consciously or not, have their entire life's context formed around media narratives. It's one reason why the social justice stuff is hitting so hard, despite the fact that America is an otherwise pretty prosperous country with no major problems causing anyone to starve. The implication is that you basically have cultural narrative context being created by literal abstract machinations who may or may not be intelligent. That's no good, because there's no moral parameter to stop the data from trying to get everyone to kill each other. People keep thinking that robot evolution is going to be like the Terminator, but it's going to be more like the Shining. People have their lives contextualized by inhuman machinations, which, okay, is pretty bleak, but not outright destructive, right? Just a bunch of consumers being taken for a ride, right? Well, no. The consequence of religion more or less falling out of style in the public consciousness is that there is no longer a single common cultural narrative. So you just don't get to see Tim at Sunday school. So what? The larger point of contention here is that there has always been a considerable percentage of any population that gives way to fanatic behavior, which in antiquity usually meant religious fanaticism. But if the narrative of religion is weakened, and the only other alternative to narrative is autonomically generated content marketing narratives too shallow to really make a lifestyle out of, you run into a phenomenon where a percentage of the population essentially migrated between brands in a pseudo idolatrous methodology. When you get down to the nitty gritty, you know, a fan base is literally the same thing as a cult. They both act as a community to bring people together to discuss a specific narrative. 
except the religious ones actually at least tried to offer the illusion of, of being beneficial to society at large, while the autonomic models are purely for profit and offer hedonistic sensory overload to compensate for any shallowness. Have you ever stopped to consider how it is we now live in a world where a bunch of people do batshit crazy things over cartoons to the point that they end up sending death threats and harassing people, you know, selling cars for sauce, etc.? Do you really think that's normal behavior? No. Those sort of people would have been in a fucking monastery a couple of hundred years ago because they are fanatics, pure and simple. Nothing wrong with being a fanatic if it's constructive, but these narratives do not have that in mind. To put it bluntly, we are quite literally living in a society where abstract mathematical formulas are in charge of a market that pretty much doesn't sell products anymore and is more focused on selling narrative scams based on the parameters of an algorithm and a bunch of wackos who, in another lifetime, would have been witch burners who have nothing to spiritually satisfy their intrinsic obsessive tendencies, having had a common cultural narrative replaced with many different smaller ones, which is how you end up with Nazis and commies in a prosperous capitalist country thinking the end of the world is coming next week, literally creating their own problems. One could argue that we have too much freedom of choice when it comes to information about narratives, and it's actively harming society. In Russia, during the Soviet era, they used avant-garde techniques in their propaganda to give their population so much bizarre data to sift through that they just conform with no real goal in mind. And then you look at the Chinese, who just censor their ever-living hell out of everything and have less overall data to feed their population. But here in the West, you simultaneously have too much data and too little diversity in data, making it easy for context to corral them into a specific mindset. And all it takes is a pair of eyes to see that the current mindset for especially the American population is apathetic versus messiah complex murderousness. The silver lining to all this, I think, is that these marketers and marketeers don't know they're playing with fire. I don't think it's entirely out of the question that someday soon a crowd of angry people will actually lynch content creators for not towing their own narrative complex. And very soon they may begin to live in fear of the very people that create and enjoy the content that is out there. If not apocalyptic, these will be interesting times. Although, somehow, I think this is only going to be a drop in a much larger bucket that will be the 2020s. And as a small aside to all this, I just wanted to point out a thought. It's interesting how we now live in a world where the story of what something is, the mythos or narrative or feedback loop or whatever you want to call it, is more powerful than the thing itself. It's something that Nietzsche, Marx, and even Plato talked about. But it strikes me as a little funny because in critiquing the story of history they found themselves in, they became influential in some way or another to parts of it. You, know, you think about Nietzsche's eternal recurrence, Socrates' recollection, or the Hindu concept of reincarnation, or even the modern idea of a feedback loop. All are pretty accurate in an observable sense. Human history does repeat itself. The faces change, the places change, but the people and the stories do not. It's kind of sad in a miraculous sort of way. We are living in our own narrative imperative feedback loop. And that, my dear listener, is it for today's episode. If you stuck around to the end, I'd like to say thank you very much for listening to me ramble on like this, and I want you to know that I appreciate you for it. So, until the next episode, I will thank you and say best of health to you, and goodbye. <laughs>